The Gothic War between the Eastern Roman Empire and the Austro-Gothic Kingdom of Italy was fought from 535 until 554 in Italy, Dalmatia, Sardinia, Sicily and Corsica. It is commonly divided into two phases. The first phase lasted from 535 to 540 and ended with the fall of the Ostrogothic capital of Ravenna and the apparent reconquest of Italy by the Byzantines. During the second phase, the Goths' resistance was reinvigorated under Totila and put down only after a long struggle by Narses, who also repelled the 554 invasion by the Franks and Alemanni. In the same year, Justinian promulgated the Pragmatic Sanction which prescribed Italy's new government. Several cities in northern Italy continued to hold out, however, until the early 560s. The war had its roots in the ambition of East Roman Emperor Justinian to recover the provinces of the former Western Roman Empire, which had been lost to invading barbarian tribes in the previous century. By the end of the conflict Italy was devastated and considerably depopulated. As a consequence, the victorious Byzantines found themselves unable to resist the invasion of the Lombards in 568, which resulted in the loss of large parts of the Italian peninsula. Background Italy under the Goths in 476, the Western Roman Empire in Italy was overthrown, when Odoacer deposed Emperor Romulus Augustulus and declared himself Rex Italiae, although he recognized the nominal suzerainty of the Eastern Emperor, Zeno. His independent policies and increasing strength made him a threat in the eyes of Constantinople. At that time, the Ostrogoths, under their leader, Theodoric, were settled as Fodorati of the Empire in the Western Balkans, but were also growing restless. Zeno decided to kill two birds with one stone, and sent the Ostrogoths to Italy to remove Odoacer, officially acting as the representatives of the Empire. Theodoric and the Goths were able to defeat Odoacer, and Italy came under Gothic rule. However, as per the arrangement between Theodoric, Zeno and the latter's successor Anastasius, this arrangement was scrupulously observed by Theodoric. The administration continued in its old form and was staffed exclusively by Romans, and legislation remained the preserve of the emperor. At the same time, the army remained the exclusive preserve of the Goths, who came under the authority of their own chiefs and courts. The two peoples were further kept apart by faith. The Roman population was Chalcedonian Christian, while the Goths were Arian Christians, although, unlike the Vandals or the early Visigoths, they practiced considerable religious tolerance. This complex dual system worked effectively under the capable and strong leadership of Theodoric, who knew how to carry out his own policy without alienating the Roman aristocracy but began to break down during his later years and collapsed entirely under his heirs. With the ascension of Emperor Justin I, the end of the Acacian Schism and the return of ecclesiastical unity with the East, several members of the Italian senatorial aristocracy began to favor closer ties to Constantinople as a balance to the Goths' power. The deposition and execution of the distinguished magister officiorum Boethius and his father-in-law in 524 was a symptom of the slowly increasing alienation of their caste from the Gothic regime. When Theodoric died in August 526, he was succeeded by his grandson Athelaric. As he was an infant, the regency was held by his mother, Amalasantha, who had received a Roman education and initiated reconciliatory policies with the Senate and the Empire. These policies, and her efforts to educate Athelaric in the Roman way, displeased the Goths, who started plotting against her. Perceiving the danger, Amalasantha executed three leading conspirators, while at the same time writing a letter to the new emperor, Justinian I, and asking to provide her with sanctuary if she should be forced to flee Italy. Eventually, however, Amalasantha remained even after her son's death in 534. Seeking support, she chose her cousin Theodahad, to whom she offered the kingship. 
It was a fatal move, as Theoda had lost little time in having her arrested and then, in early 535, executed. Justinian's policies and preparations already in 533, utilizing a dynastic dispute, Justinian had sent his most talented general, Belisarius, to recover the North African provinces held by the Vandals. The Vandalic War produced an unexpectedly swift and decisive victory for the Roman Empire, and must certainly have encouraged Justinian in his ambition to recover the lost western provinces. During this war, Amalasuntha had allowed the Roman fleet to use the harbours of Sicily, which belonged to the Ostrogothic Kingdom, as bases of operation. Through his agents, Justinian tried to save Amalasuntha's life, but to no avail. Her death, in any case, gave him casus belli for war with the Goths. As Procopius writes, as soon as he learned what had happened to Amalasuntha, being in the ninth year of his reign, he entered upon war. Belisarius was appointed commander in chief for the expedition against Italy with 7,500 men, while Mundus, the Magister Militum per Illyricum was tasked to occupy the Gothic province of Dalmatia. The small size of the forces made available to Belisarius must be noted, especially when compared to the much larger army he took in the field against the Vandals, an enemy much weaker than the Ostrogoths. The preparations for the operation were carried out in absolute secrecy. While Justinian tried to secure the neutrality of the Franks by gifts of gold, Belisarius subdues the Goths, 535 to 540, fall of Sicily and Dalmatia to the Byzantines. Belisarius first landed at Sicily, which was strategically located between the now Roman Africa and Italy, and whose population was well disposed toward the empire. The island was quickly captured, with the only determined resistance, at Pan Ormus, overcome by late December. From there, Belisarius prepared to cross over into Italy, where Theoda had, fearful because of the Byzantine successes, had sent envoys to Justinian, proposing at first to cede Sicily and recognize his overlordship, but later to cede all of Italy to him. In the meantime, triumph and disaster had befallen the Romans in Dalmatia. Mundus had quickly overrun Dalmatia and captured its capital, Salona, but a large Gothic army arrived to reclaim the province, and Mundus's son Mauritius fell in a skirmish. Enraged by this loss, Mundus marched with his army against the Goths, and inflicted a heavy defeat upon them. However, in the pursuit, Mundus himself was wounded mortally. As a result, the Roman army withdrew, and all of Dalmatia, with the exception of Salona, was abandoned to the Goths. All this happened in March 536, and Theoda had, learning of this success became emboldened, and rejected and imprisoned Justinian's ambassadors. Any possibility of a peaceful takeover was now over. Justinian sent the new Magister Militum per Illyricum, Constantinus, to recover Dalmatia, and ordered Belisarius to cross into Italy. Constantinus accomplished his task speedily. The Gothic general, Gripa, abandoned Salona, which he had only recently occupied, because of the ruined state of its fortifications and the pro-Roman stance of its citizens, and withdrew to the north. Constantinianus then occupied the city and rebuilt its walls. Seven days later, the Gothic army departed for Italy, so that by late June Dalmatia was again in Roman hands. Ascension of Vitages, first siege of Rome in the late spring of 536, Belisarius crossed with his army into Italy, where he captured Regium. The Roman army sacked Naples after a costly siege in November, and finally entered Rome unopposed in December. The rapidity of Belisarius' advance had taken the Goths by surprise, and the inactivity of Theoda had enraged him. After the fall of Naples he was deposed, and a new king selected. Wittages left Rome and headed for Ravenna, where he married Amalasuntha's daughter Matasuntha and began rallying his forces against the invasion. Wittages led a large force against Rome, where Belisarius, who did not have enough troops to face the Goths in the open field, had remained. 
This siege of Rome, the first of three in the Gothic War, lasted for a year, from March 537 to March 538. It featured several sallies and minor engagements, as well as several large-scale actions. But after reinforcements from Constantinople arrived in April 537 and November 537, the defending Byzantines took the offensive. The Byzantine cavalry took several towns in the Goths rear, which worsened their already bad supply situation and threatened Gothic civilians. Finally, the fall of Ariminum, barely a day's march from Ravenna, to a Roman cavalry force, forced Vitages to abandon the siege and withdraw. Siege of Ariminum, arrival of Narses as Vitages marched to the northeast, he strengthened the garrisons of various towns and forts along his way, in order to secure his rear, and then turned towards Ariminum. The Roman force of 2,000 horsemen occupying it comprised some of Belisarius of finest cavalry, and Belisarius decided to replace them with an infantry garrison, so as to have them available at his side. However, the commander, John, refused to obey the orders of his commander, and remained at Ariminum. The error of this was made plain when, shortly after, the Goths arrived. Although an initial assault failed, they proceeded to subject the city, which had few supplies, to a siege. At the same time, another Gothic army marched against Ancona. Although they routed the Roman forces in open battle, they ultimately failed to take the city's fortifications. At that time, new forces, 2000 Herald Foderati, under the Armenian eunuch Narses, arrived at Picinum. Belisarius went to meet Narses, and when the two generals met in council, they disagreed on the course to be followed. With Narses supporting a direct relief expedition to Ariminum and Belisarius favoring a more cautious approach. But the arrival of a letter from John, which illustrated the immediate prospect of the city's fall, resolved the issue in favor of the former. Belisarius divided his army in three parts, a seaborne force under his capable and trusted Lieutenant Tildiger, another under the equally experienced Martin which was to arrive from the south, and the main force under himself and Narses, which was to arrive from the northwest. However, Vitages learned of their coming, and, facing the prospect of being surrounded by superior forces, the Goths hurriedly withdrew to Ravenna. Dissension between Belisarius and Narses The bloodless victory at Ariminum strengthened Narses' position vis-à-vis -vis Belisarius, with many Roman generals, including John, turning their allegiance to him. In the council after the relief of Ariminum, the dissension came to the fore. While Belisarius was in favor of reducing the strong Gothic garrison of Auximum in their rear and relieving the siege of Mediolanum, Narses favored a less concentrated effort, including a campaign in Imilia. Belisarius, to his credit, did not allow matters to reach a full breach, and instead marched with Narses and John against Urbanum. The two armies encamped separately, and shortly afterwards, Narses, convinced that the town was unassailable and well supplied, broke camp and departed for Ariminum. From there he sent John to Emilia, which was quickly subdued. Nevertheless, aided by the fortunate drying up of Urbanum's only water spring, the town fell to Belisarius soon after. At any rate, the Roman army in Italy now followed two different commanders and the results of this disunity were to become tragically clear in the failure to relieve Mediolanum. Siege and sack of Mediolanum In April 538 Belisarius, petitioned by representatives from Mediolanum, then the second most populous and wealthy city in Italy after Rome, had sent a force of 1,000 men, under Mundilus, to the city. This force succeeded in securing the city and most of Luguria, except Ticinum, with ease. However, Vitages called upon the Franks for help, and a force of 10,000 Burgundians swiftly and unexpectedly crossed the Alps and together with the Goths under Eurius laid siege to the city, which was both ill-provisioned and under-garrisoned. Since the already small Roman force had been dispersed as garrisons to the neighboring cities and forts, 
a relief force was dispatched by Belisarius, but its commanders, Martin and Uliarize, did not make any effort to help the besieged. Instead, they asked for further reinforcements by the forces of John and the Magister Militum per Illyricum Justin, who operated in the nearby province of Imilia. At this point, the dissensions in the Roman command exacerbated the situation, as John and Justin refused to move without orders from Narses. And even then, John fell ill and the preparations were halted. These delays proved fatal for the besieged city, which, after many months of siege, was reaching the point of starvation. The Goths offered Mundilus a guarantee that the lives of his soldiers would be spared if he surrendered the city, but... Since no guarantee was offered for the civilian population, he refused, until, at about the end of March 539, his starving soldiers forced him to accept these terms. The Roman garrison was indeed spared, but the city's inhabitants were subjected to a general massacre, and the city itself was razed. Frankish invasion of northern Italy, fall of Auximum and Faisali in the aftermath of this disaster, Narses was recalled, and Belisarius confirmed as supreme commander with absolute authority for Italy. At the same time, Vitages sent envoys to the Persian court, hoping to convince Chosros I to reopen hostilities with the Byzantines. That would force Justinian to concentrate the majority of his forces, including Belisarius, in the east, and allow the Goths to recover. The war would indeed come, but too late for Vitages. Belisarius, for his part, resolved to conclude the war by taking Ravenna. Prior to this, he had to deal with the two Gothic strongholds of Auximum and Faisuli. While Martin and John hindered the Gothic army under Eurys to cross the river Po, a part of the army under Justin besieged Faisali, and Belisarius himself undertook the siege of Auximum. While the sieges were underway, however, a large Frankish army under King Thedabit I crossed the Alps and came upon the Goths and the Byzantines encamped on the two sides of the Po. The Goths, thinking they had come as allies, were swiftly routed. The equally astonished Byzantines gave battle, were defeated and withdrew southwards into Tuscany. In the event, the Frankish invasion, which could have altered the course of the war, was defeated by an outbreak of dysentery, which caused great losses and forced the Franks to withdraw. The Lazarius concentrated on taking the two besieged cities which was accomplished when both garrisons were forced by starvation to capitulate in October or November 539. Capture of Ravenna and departure of Belisarius after these successes had eliminated potential threats to his rear, and freshly reinforced with troops from Dalmatia, Belisarius moved against Ravenna. Detachments were sent north of the Po, and the Imperial fleet patrolled the Adriatic, cutting the city off from supplies. Inside the besieged Gothic capital, Vitages received a Frankish embassy looking for an alliance, but after the events of the previous summer, no trust could be placed on the Franks' offers. Soon afterwards, an embassy came from Constantinople, bearing surprisingly lenient terms from Justinian. Anxious to finish the war and concentrate against the looming Persian War, the Emperor offered a partition of Italy. The lands south of the Po would be retained by the Empire, those north of the river by the Goths. The Goths readily accepted the terms, but Belisarius, judging this to be a betrayal of all he had striven to achieve, refused to sign. Even though his generals disagreed with him, disheartened, the Goths resorted to a final plan. They offered to make Belisarius, whom they respected, the Western Emperor. Belisarius had no intention of accepting the role, but saw how he could use this situation to his advantage, and feigned acceptance. Thus, in May 540, Belisarius and his army entered Ravenna. The city was not looted while the Goths were treated well and allowed to keep their properties. 
In the aftermath of Ravenna's surrender, several Gothic garrisons north of the Po surrendered. Others remained in Gothic hands, among which were Ticinum, where Urias was based, and Verona, held by Ildabad. Soon after, Belisarius sailed for Constantinople, where he was refused the honor of a triumph. Witigers was named a patrician and sent to a comfortable retirement, while the captive Goths were sent to reinforce the eastern armies. The reigns of Ildabad and Araric Belisarius a departure left most of Italy in Roman hands, but north of the Po, Ticinum and Verona remained unconquered. Soon after Belisarius a breach of faith towards them became apparent. The Goths, at the suggestion of Urias, chose Ildabad as their new king. In Belisarius awake, Justinian neglected to appoint an overall commander-in-chief, while the Roman armies and their commanders neglected their discipline and committed acts of plundering, and the newly established imperial bureaucracy made itself immediately unpopular by its oppressive fiscal demands. Ildabad re-established control over Venetia and Liguria. Ildabad decisively defeated the Roman general Vitalius at Treviso, but after having Urias murdered because of a quarrel between their wives, he too was assassinated in May 541 in retribution. At this point, the Rugians, remnants of Odoas's army who had remained in Italy and sided with the Goths, proclaimed one of their own, Araric. As the new king, the choice was curiously assented to by the Goths. Araric, however, persuaded the Goths to start negotiations with Justinian, but secretly intended to hand over his realm to the empire. The Goths perceived his inactivity for what it was, and turned to Ildabad's nephew, Totila, and offered to make him king. Ironically, Totila had already opened negotiations with the Byzantines, but when he was contacted by the conspirators, he assented. Thus, in the early autumn of 541, Araric was murdered and Totila proclaimed king.